What is up everyone, I am your speedster TNI6 and welcome back to It Moves. Now in the last part, we gone through two whole chapters and this episode, we're gonna go through chapter 3. Which, are they enough like to play freaky? The door is firmly shut. What? What happened? Um... So, uh... Whoa. Huh? 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 What? What's going on? Where am I? Hello? Hello? Okay, this is strange. Where am I? Am I in a sewer? Okay, I'm suddenly starting to see. Calling <laughs> Okay, I'm Only you know the atmosphere is actually very well done, and I thought that was another way in the darkness for a sec. A lot of struggling fans stuff here. Yeah. I keep hearing clanks. Hmm. I will admit, this game's pretty good so far. I don't know if this is the demo version or not. All I know is that it's an RPG maker game. Uh, where do I go? What's this? Some kind of a scene. Some kind of altar. Okay, this one says hello. All of a sudden. Uh, hold on a minute. Aha! So, what did that do? Did that open something up for me? Not that one. Not that one because I can see it. All you know, the atmosphere here is very good. Did you see that? I. I'm fine. How are you? Okay, I know. So, uh, where do I go now? I'm assuming they had to go somewhere. Oh, I didn't see this way down here. What's the other side of the altar? Okay. That's not open. That's definitely not open. So, what do I do? Is this something here I missed? Oh yeah, there's a switch. So what's open now? Hi! I see you back there. I will admit the atmosphere of this game is actually very well done. Okay, that's not it. I've already pulled that one. So I must be somewhere down here then. Aha, uh -huh, here! 
to the face. What's going on? Oh. Okay, okay, now look at this. That was very creepy. That was very creepy. Get me out of there. Holy crap. I didn't even look. I don't even. Uh, I didn't even listen for that one because holy crap. Ooh. Oh. Ah. What is that? What the heck was that? You guys heard that, right? Holy crap. Huh? What happened? What happened? What happened? Huh? 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 What's going on? What's going on? It's funny how certain words can remain hidden from your mind, no matter how blatant or obvious they are. One word came to me that night, lying there in the darkness, alone, fighting a wet of a sudden change in the atmosphere, a thickening of the air as if something had displaced it. As I heard the first castle twist of the bed seats below, the first anxious increased my heartbeat at the realization that something was once again at the bottom bunk of that word. Uh, a word which had been sent in exile, filtered up through my consciousness. Breaking free of all whisper of a, per a person, gasping for air, screaming, etching and carving itself into my mind. Ghost. As this thought came to me, I noticed that my unwelcome visitor had ceased moving. The bed seats lay calm and dormant as they had been replaced with something far more hideous. A slow, rhythmic, gasping breath heaved and escaped from the thing below. I could imagine its chest rising up and falling with each sorted, sorted wheezing and gobbled breath. I, sh I shuddered and hoped beyond all hope that it would have flee without occurrence. As the house lay as it did previous night in a thick blanket of darkness, silence prevailed all but for the perverted breath of my as yet unseen bunkmate. I lay there terrified. I just wanted this thing to go. Leave me alone. What did it want? Then something unmistakably chilling inspired. It moved. It moved in a way different from before. When it threw itself around in the bottom bunk, it seemed unnecessary, without purpose, almost animalistic. For that thing lying there in the darkness, that thing which seemed intent on terrorizing, a young boy calmly and nonchalantly sat up. His labored breathing had become louder. louder. Not only a mattress and a few flimsy ones slash separated my body from the unearthly breath below. I lay there, my eyes filled with tears of fear where words cannot relate to you or anyone else course through my fame. I would not have believed that this fear could have been hidden, but I was so wrong. I, 
I imagine that this, what this thing would look like, sitting there listening from below in my mattress, hoping to catch the slightest hint that I was awake. Imagination then turned into unnerving reality. It began to touch the wooden slats which my mattress sat on. It seemed to caress them carefully, hurting what I imagined to be fingers and hands across the surface of wood. Then with great force, it trotted angrily between two slats into the mattress. Even though the padding, it felt as though someone had fiercely stuck their fingers into my side. I let all, all my cry and the wheezing sink at the end and moving thin and bunk plop applied in a violently vibrating the bunk as it had done the night before. Small flakes of pain powdered into my blanket from the wall as the frame of the bed skipped along it, backwards and forwards. Once again, I was bathed in light and this to my mother, loving, caring, as she always was. With a comforting hug and calming words, was eventually subduing my hysteria. Of course, she asked what was wrong, but I could not say. I dared not say. I simply said one word over and over and over again. Nightmare. This pattern of events continued for weeks, if not months. Night after night, I would awaken to the sound of fussling sheets. Each time I would scream so as to not provide this abomination with time, pride, and feel for me. With each cry, the bed would shake finally, stopping with the arrival of my mother, who would spend the rest of the night in the bottom bunk, seemingly unaware of the sinister force torturing her son nightly. Along the way, I managed to feign illness a few times and come up with other less than truthful reasons for sleeping in my parents' bed. But more often than not, I would be alone for the first few hours of each night in that place. The room where the lights from outside did not sit right, alone with that thing. With time, you can become dissensed. This sin said to almost anything, no matter how horrific. I had come to realize that, for whatever reason, this thing could not harm me when my mother was present. I am sure the same would have been said for my father, but as long as he was, waking him from sleep was almost impossible. Waking me, on the other hand, was no trouble at all, thanks to the nightmares. Chapter 4, Anger Overload. I'm good. Okay, I'm going to say something truthfully here. I actually did see a Markiplier's video on this. And it ended on Chapter 3, I believe. Hold on, let me see. Yeah, it ended after Chapter 3. That cutscene wasn't in the demo at all. So I have the full game. That's amazing. And was, yeah, let's save. I honestly have no idea what... Okay, that was just... Earthquake? Um. Okay, that way has a spider on it, so I'm not going that way. Uh. Another one. Whoa! A big pool. I does not use it. That is. What is going on with this kid's head? Is holy crap! I will admit it's actually pretty freaky. Are those hang dogs? What the heck? Uh... 
What now? Um. Um. Oh my goodness. Oh my god. What is going on here? Wait, they're not closing this time. I hear something. What is going on here? Holy crap! God what, what do we do? 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 Do I have to face my consequences? Oh my god, this is so creepy. Oh my god. What happened? My greatest fear realized in the winter. The days grew short, and the longer nights merely for fire to stress with more opportunities. It was a d difficult time for my family. My grandmother, a wonderfully kind and gentle woman, had deteriorated gently, greatly since the death of my grandfather. My mother was trying her best to keep her in the community as long as possible. However, dementia is a cruel and degenerate illness. Robbing a person of the memories one day at a time seems to recognize none of us, and it became clear that she would need to be moved from a house to a nursing home. Before she could be moved, my grandmother had partially difficult few nights, and my mother decided that she would stay with her. As much as I loved my grandmother and felt nothing but anguish at her illness, to this day I feel guilty that my first thoughts were not of her, but of what my nightly visitor may do. May do so they become of where my mother's absence. Her presence being the one thing which I was sure was protecting me from the full horror of the sting seats. I rushed home from school that day and immediately hence the bed seats and matches from the lower bunk. Removing all the seats and placing an old desk, a chest and drawers and some chairs would be kept in a cupboard where the bomb bunk used to be. I told my, f my father I was making an office, which he found adorable. But I would be damned if I gave that thing a place to sleep for one more night. As darkness approached, I lay there knowing my mother would, was not in the house. I did not know what to do. My only impulse was to sneak into a chili box and take a small family crucifix, which I had seen there before. While my family were not very religious, at the age I still believed in God and hoped that somehow this would protect me. Although fearful and anxious while gripping the crucifix under my pillow tightly in one hand, sleep eventually came and as I tipped it off to dream, I hoped that I would awaken in the morning without incidents. Unfortunately, that night was the most terrifying of all. Um, chapter 5, Urban Explorer. I'm getting through this game. 
I downloaded this game like what? Well, oh! Okay, yeah, definitely say. Holy crap. That picture is creepy. What is it? It says, woof. Okay, am I able to go to uh, go out here? Oh, I can. The feeling that sometimes defending your privacy, even without ill will, it's still disturbing. Um. Um. So I had to go down there. Holy crap! What is going on in this game? Am I even heading that way? What am I doing? Huh? I'm not doing this guys. What's going on? What is going on here? What are these things? Am I dead? Um. What happened? It's an awfully quiet nowadays. Is there something wrong, son? Nothing. Are you sure? Is there something wrong with your room? Are you lonely without your brother? No. Alright then. What's going on? I will gradually. June was once again dark. As my eyes adjusted, I could gradually make out the window and the door and the wall of some toys on the shelf and even to this day I served the thing fit for there's no noise. First no earthly seats, no movement at all. June felt lifeless, lifeless, yet not empty. The nightly visitor, that unwelcome, wheezing, hate filled thing which had terrorized me night after night was not in the bottom bunk. It was in my bed. I opened my mouth to scream, but nothing came out. Other terror had shaken the very sound from my voice. I lay motionless. If I could not scream, I did not want to let it know I was awake. I lay not yet seen it. I had not yet seen it. I could only feel it. It was obscured under my blanket. I could see it outline, and I could feel its presence. But I dared not look. The weight of his of it pressed down on top of me, and I say, "Say some." I will never forget. When I say that hours have passed, I do not exaggerate. I lay there motionless in the darkness. I was every bit sca a scared and frightened young boy. If it had been during the summer months, it would not ha have been light by then. But the grasp of winter is long and unrelenting, and I knew it would be hours before sunrise. The sunrise was I yearned for. I was a timid child by nature, but I faced a breaking point. A moment where I could wait no more. Why I could survive under this intimately deviant abomination no longer. Fear can sometimes wear you out, make you 
stood bare, a shell of nerves leaving me only the slightest chase of you behind. I had to get out of that bed. That I remembered. The crucifix. My hand still laid underneath the pillow, but it was empty. I slowly moved my wrist to find it. Minimizing as best I could to say the hand and five basin cars, but it could not be found. I had even knocked the half bar your head. I could not bear to think of it been taken out of my hand. But after Krista faced I had I lost any sense of hope. And when at such a young age you can be acutely aware of what death is and intensely frightened of it. I knew I was going to die in that bed if I lay there dormant, passive, doing nothing. I had to leave that room behind, but how? So I leave from the bed and hope that I make it to the door? What if it, what if it is faster than me? Or should I slowly slip out of the top bunk, hoping to, to not disturb my uncanny bedfellow? Just play it! Realizing that I had not stood when I moved, trying to find the crucifix. I began to have the strangest of thoughts. Chapter 6, The Abyss, holy crap. Um... Why am I in water? I'm gonna catch it here for this part, alright guys? Thank you all so much for watching. If you like this one, please subscribe. It really helps, and I'll see you guys next time. Hitchhog out.